Good day, everyone, and thanks for joining us as we discuss this ISS National Lab Research Announcement, or NLRA, focused on technology development and applied research. I'm Patrick O'Neill, Public Affairs and Outreach Lead for the ISS National Laboratory, and I'll be one of your hosts for today's webinar. The purpose of these webinars is to help educate those of you who might be interested in submitting Step 1 concept summaries for ISS National Lab Research Announcements. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the ISS National Lab website. Additionally, at the end of this webinar, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. Okay, so let's get a little into the background and history of the ISS National Lab. The Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, or CASES, is the manager of the ISS National Lab and has served as such since 2011 through a cooperative agreement with NASA. In fact, NASA extended this cooperative agreement for CASES to manage the ISS National Lab through 2027. Each year, the ISS National Lab puts forth a variety of research announcements focused on targeted areas, soliciting project concepts from researchers, companies, innovators, and educators alike. ISS National Lab research announcements enable greater access to the ISS, a unique platform in low Earth orbit, bringing scientific value back to people here on Earth, building commerce in space, and inspiring the next generation of researchers and explorers. And with that, I would like to introduce Munir Alafranji, Research and Innovation Manager and Technology Lead for the ISS National Lab. Munir, how are you doing? Doing well, I'm glad to be here. That's great to hear. Uh, we're looking forward to you walking us through this research announcement and providing information as well as recommendations for viewers who decide to submit a step one concept summary for consideration. So excited to learn more about this opportunity. Thank you, Patrick. Today is a very exciting day because to your point, it gives us a chance to provide some insight into this research announcement focused on technology development and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. So let's get into today's presentation and dig a bit deeper. All right, so with that, let's start off with the very obvious question. Why conduct research in space? Conducting research in low Earth orbit or LEO offers several advantages. The ISS National Lab provides the opportunity for scientific and technological discoveries under the unique and persistent conditions of spaceflight, which you cannot replicate on Earth. These advantages of the ISS National Lab benefit a wide variety of R&D areas. The extreme environment available through the ISS National Lab may be helpful for accelerating materials durability testing by exposing materials to the harsh conditions of space. These include extreme heat and cold cycling, ultra-high vacuum, atomic oxygen, and high-energy radiation, all of which can be harnessed during experimentation and testing. The space station also provides a unique vantage point from which to study our planet, as the station's orbit covers 90% of the world's populated areas. This vantage point provides a global perspective on Earth's climate, weather patterns, and environmental changes, helping monitor and understand phenomena such as climate change, natural disasters, deforestation, and ocean currents. Lastly, sustained microgravity has proven to have a profound impact on both physical and living systems. I like to tell researchers that removing the vector of gravity from your research allows you to see your system with a brand new lens of discovery. Conditions on the ISS are ideal for testing fundamental physics theories, for example, investigating particle behavior, heat and mass transport, and electromagnetic fields. Your step one concept summary should very clearly state why you need to conduct your research on the space station. Please take note of this very important point. During today's meeting, we'll dive into the NLRA process and technology development objectives, the scope, and look at some existing ISS National Lab research examples. We'll then highlight both the process and timeline for this research opportunity, along with some details about the award itself. Then, as Patrick mentioned, we'll have a question and answer session. Let's talk about this research announcement focused on technology advancement and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. We're seeking projects in the area of applied research and development, technology demonstration, technology readiness level, or TRL, maturation, and translational medicine on the ISS. Ideally, these projects will have a clear pathway to practical applications that can provide tangible value back to the organization doing the work and ultimately back to the nation. Munir, it, it sounds like you're looking for research that might drive economic benefits either directly or indirectly. Absolutely. For example, you might test a product in the space environment that resolves a key technology hurdle, which then allows you to take that product to the marketplace. 
or maybe your space-based research enhances and expands the market reach for that product. If you're familiar with technology readiness level and you speak that language, you should be considering maturation of technology that is currently somewhere around TRL4 or higher and looking to raise that TRL. If raising TRL levels is the major aim for your proposed research, your step one concept summary should directly address your current TRL and TRL raising goals for your project. For your proposal, it's a good idea to have a line of sight to commercial application. Think in terms of enabling a commercial offering to an end user after you conclude your work on the ISS. This research announcement is broad and we are accepting topics in a variety of areas. Your research could be something to do with supercomputers, artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, semiconductors, remote sensing, biofabrication, thin film deposition, optical fibers, or testing new therapeutics. We're excited to see your ideas through this process. I would now like to share a couple of research examples that have successfully utilized the ISS National Lab to advance technology. OrbitFab partnered with the ISS National Lab to launch its first project in 2018, seeking to test technology that supported plans to build gas stations in space, basically an in-orbit propellant supply chain. In the video shown here, NASA astronaut Christina Cook is spinning a flex tank during testing for the FURFI project on board the ISS in 2019. Engineering the company's hardware for in-orbit spacecraft refueling required understanding tank dynamics in space and designing pump systems that would work in microgravity. The result of this ISS investigation successfully showed that OrbitFab's technology could support a wide range of propellants for spacecraft thrusters. Orbital Sidekick is another example I'd like to highlight. Their innovation is a hyperspectral imaging platform designed to monitor solids, liquids, and gases on Earth's surface. This technology could provide more advanced imaging capabilities than traditional satellites. The platform captures unique chemical fingerprints of targets and can provide a very detailed understanding of the landscape being observed, which is essential for monitoring underground structures and pipelines. The platform could also inform precision farming and improve research management, help map out oil spills and detect gas leaks, as well as help in the monitoring of prevention of wildfires. Orbital Sidekick secured 10 million last year to provide monitoring services to the oil and gas industry. We want to help your innovation achieve this kind of success through the current research announcement that enables access to some of the most unique research facilities in the world. Where might applicants find information on hardware and facilities available to support the research goals? The ISS National Lab offers state-of-the-art hardware and facilities, providing a wide range of research equipment and systems that enable advanced R&D and technology demonstration. I encourage applicants to review the available facilities using the links provided here. You'll also find these links in the research announcement instructions available for download on the research announcement webpage. I encourage applicants to reach out to our operations team with any questions about available hardware and facilities. In addition, we ask all applicants to identify an implementation partner they'd like to work with and start a dialogue about project goals. Implementation partners are organizations that have expertise in translating proposed work for the ISS environment. It's important to connect with an implementation partner during step one preparation. I encourage you to visit our implementation partner database and begin engaging in conversations with these organizations early. There's additional information about implementation partners as well as available hardware on station in the solicitation documents. You will want to get a realistic estimate of what your project might cost especially if you're new to space, so a conversation with an implementation partner would be a very helpful way to start. Since we're talking about cost, this is a perfect time to discuss funding. Funding for this specific research announcement is 750,000 with the expectation of two to four awards. You're expected to cover direct costs such as your time, your team's time, your equipment, fabrication costs, and testing that you would do on the ground to prepare for space. As I mentioned, when it comes to doing space-based research on the ISS, it's essential to have an implementation partner to work alongside you. The funding set aside for this research announcement is to assist with implementation partner costs. 
launch to the ISS, the cost of any crew resources that you may need to perform your experiment, and resources to get your samples or your data home to Earth will be completely covered as well. Once a project is selected and funding is awarded, the time that it takes before the experiment flies to the ISS depends largely on the complexity of what you're trying to do, as well as the availability of supply vehicles. Generally, this period varies from about 12 to 18 months and project completion is expected approximately three years from award date. Right, thanks for that deep dive on funding, Munir. I'm sure most viewers are now wondering, how does someone even get considered for funding through this research announcement? In fiscal year 2024, we've planned two cycles or distinct research opportunity announcements for technology advancement and applied research leveraging the ISS National Lab. This is the first of two cycles. This research announcement went live on January 9th, and step one concept summaries are due by March 4th. Concept summaries that score well will be invited to submit a full proposal, which is step two in our two-step application process. Full proposals will be due on May 7th. Take advantage of the online documents and resources. Pay close attention to the instructions and email us should you have any questions. Take your time and read through all the step one concept summary instructions. During the concept summary review, we conduct a high-level review for operational feasibility and for scientific and technical scope, and we also do a preliminary compliance review. It is important to note that there may be advantages to submitting your step one concept summary early. For example, if you don't get selected, you may be notified prior to the deadline, providing you with feedback and an opportunity to digest that feedback. Make alterations to your concept summary and resubmit for another attempt. And if your concept is submitted early and is selected, you'll be notified early, giving you more time to start working on your next step, which is a full proposal. Everything we've covered so far regarding this research announcement is all detailed in the downloadable documents and instructions available on the Research Opportunity webpage listed below. In fact, there's more detail in those documents than what we're sharing with you now. If you're interested in submitting a Step 1 concept summary, we encourage you to go to that webpage, look at our resources, and download the instruction documents. Munir, is there also information available regarding the evaluation process? Yes, details on the evaluation methodology can be found in the Proposal Evaluator instructions for this research announcement, which is one of the documents contained in the zipped file available for download. As you prepare your Step 1 concept summary for submission to the ISS National Lab research announcement, we recommend you keep in mind a few tips that we hope you find beneficial. Use the available resources. The current Opportunity web pages have helpful resources in the sidebar and at the bottom of the pages. So please take a look at all the related links available for you. Connect with an implementation partner early. The scope of work and budget that you receive from your selected implementation partner is critical. Write to the evaluation criteria. The instructions outline the evaluation criteria that will be used to evaluate the concept summary. Address all the evaluation criteria. Proposals that do not address all the criteria or address them poorly are very likely to receive a low evaluation rating. Lastly, submit a compliant concept. Ensure that your research objectives are within the scope for this specific research announcement. Remember, we're available to answer questions in advance of your Step 1 concept summary submission and during your Step 2 proposal writing, should you be invited to submit a full proposal. You can email us with your questions at any time. See the email below. Well, that's it for this research announcement. Our team is here to support you. Our website has all the solicitation documents and instructions, as well as a host of resources to help you submit the best concept summary possible. Thanks, Munir. To our audience, Remember that the goal of ISS National Lab activities is to bring value and impact to the U.S. economy and taxpayers by benefiting life here on Earth. Munir, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Pleasure is mine. So what's next on the agenda? Are we ready to answer some questions? Definitely. In just a minute, we'll be taking questions from you, our webinar attendees. Stay tuned.